Our next item of new business is minimum, minimum course enrollment. Kevin. Okay, so uh, as we talked about briefly, what you're going to have a couple documents. These are walk-in documents, correct, Pam? Yes. The reason they're walk-in documents is that we didn't have our <coughs> curriculum council meeting until uh, Monday before, after the board packets went out. Our curriculum council advisory. Curriculum council, council advisory. advisory. So, uh, do we, do we coming around. Pam, do you want to uh, introduce the courses? Marianne, do you have an extra copy of that for me, or was that put up? Of the 20? Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I have it here. I'm sorry. I have it. Okay. So the memo you see on top is the cover page. It's the conclusion of the registration process. These were the targets we used when staffing. 30 to 1 student-teacher ratio for non-lab courses. 26 to 1 for ratio for lab courses, and then 40 to 1 for student-teacher ratio for physical education and music classes. What I assigned to the building administration was a plus or minus two variance, and that the goal was to get a department average um, that aligned with those <coughs> targets. So if you had lab classes, your department average for lab classes should be those numbers. Uh, if you have all classroom sections, then it should align with a 30 to 1 target within plus or minus two. And then I allowed flexibility for the department chairs and the building administration to look on how, how they wanted to staff particular classes. If there was classes <coughs> that were uh, intervention, stronger in interventions or with um, students that needed more attention, they, were, they had the flexibility to staff some of those classes at a lower class size as long as their department average came in within the target. Um, as stated earlier, being February, and a lot, the way the school law is written and the way our collective bargaining agreement is written, I would feel more, it's my professional opinion that we staff accordingly to what we have and students registered. We wait for summer registrations and then you can always recall staff. I don't want to recommend to the board um, staffing that may hit or miss on transfers or people moving in, moving out, or students changing their mind and dropping a course to take a study hall, some of those things. So. Um, what you'll find attached is the, the courses that we will run according to policy 6 colon 31, which is the min minimum course enrollment. Anything under 20 needs to be approved by the board. And what Pam did is, uh, uh, on the second page of this document, there's a dotted line. And those are courses that are more or less mandated courses, our ESL courses for our second language learners, our special ed courses. Although we know that the board does not need to approve these because those have class sizes under 20 but still need to run. We wanted to make sure the board was aware of these to, to answer any questions that may arise. So it's really uh, the first 8 to 10 classes that um, Pam can field questions on and that Pam and I are recommending uh, run under 20 students at this time. And I think it, it needs to be stated that the department chairs and Pam did a great job working on this um, to make sure that we were still providing students opportunities to take classes they signed up for. But, you know, it, it's the parents tonight during citizen comments offer a lot of great comments. And this is not an easy decision. And this is what. Um, you, you pay your superintendent and your, your building principal to do is to make some of those tough decisions and you have to trust our decision making. Um, we want to let every kid take every class they sign up for. But at some point in time we have to make a decision of do we allow a class to run with 10 students in it while we're trying to shove 30 into an algebra course that's going to get kids ready for the ACT. You know, so we try to keep all those things in mind as we're making these decisions. Uh, we're trying to make sure kids have access to music classes, fine arts classes, world language courses that are, you know, that are at varying diff interest level right now. Um, we're trying to take all of that into consideration while helping the, the district uh, cut its deficit. So um, we spent several hours on this going back and forth, having philosophical discussions, having tough discussions. You know, 
some of the staffing decisions in those ten and a half uh, recommended reductions right now. We're losing ten and a half stars. I don't think the previous administration that hired those teachers or that Pam was involved in hiring those teachers, all those are great teachers. Um, but we have to kind of take everything into consideration right now when we're looking at a projected deficit of $1.6 million. So um, without any more explanation from my end, I'd like to turn it over to Pam so she can talk about uh, the classes that are under 20. Um, when you talk, which, if we're, which are the ones that we're being asked to approve? Um, I'll, I'll go through everything on here except, uh, l let me explain that. Okay. First, um, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Skinkis for his acknowledgement of the hard work and the, uh, the pain that this costs, you know, the, the department chairs as they were raising class sizes and, and they're concerned about the impact that will have on student learning. So I thank him for that. I'd like to acknowledge also that um, Tim Scanlon and Beth Augustine, the, the director of student, uh, the, the department chair of student services, and Tim, our assistant principal for curriculum instruction, were part of those that process over a week. And I'd like to thank um, Ms. Ruska and Dr. Keene for, for their assistance on Monday, too, of reviewing this. And since the time I met with them on Monday, there are a couple of changes, so I'll, I'll outline that. Um, courses below 20, all of the courses, with the exception of the bottom one on the first page, we have currently staffed for so if you don't run these then our our staffing um, the reduction will go up in other words we will reduce more teachers or possibly try to absorb something um, within our class counts in an, in another way within those departments we we ran pretty close to the 20 so in applied arts as you can see there are three classes that we're asking for but really only one that is staffed according to the normal uh, the, the protocols for FTE. The introduction to TV and advanced TV production, those are, are staffed um, differently, and so they're, um, they, you might want to consider those in a different manner. Um, the staff person who teaches those classes in, in the TV department um, does not uh, get staffed on our, does not show up on our FTE charts. So um, you're, you're aware of that. So the Advanced Auto and Auto Two as a combined class has 16 students. It is a semester capstone auto class. It does earn dual credit at Triton College. I was asked to look at could students, if students take it at RB, then of course there isn't a cost to that except for if there's a course fee attached to it. But they can get Triton credit for the course. If they take it on Triton's campus, they have to pay Triton tuition and pay for their own uh, transportation there. Um, the courses are not run, uh, the majority of them run during the day or that there's an option at 6 to 11 p.m. at night and another one from, for an, the advanced course, which I don't know if would be the equivalent. I'd have to talk to someone there from 2.30 to 5.30, but most of their autos classes run until 11 p.m. at night. So that might be somewhat of a challenge. These, the, that class does get some money allotted to it through federal um, Perkins and um, tech grants here in the state. So um, that's one course that we, that we have down there. We are also being encouraged um, by the state, um, especially um, lately, to um, have career pathways where our students can take classes here that would then connect them to the community college. This is a career pathway for our students. So many of our students who take this course then go on to technical voc tech classes um, at Triton and, can, and are, have a, a jump start on their careers. So that, that's one class. Fine Arts, there's AP Music Theory that's currently got, um, that is 16 students enrolled. It's a capstone music class. Um, it's the only AP class offered in the music department. Um, there is a somewhat of an equivalent class at Triton, but uh, there are a number of classes, Theory of Music 1, Theory of Music 2, Theory of Music 3, and when you look them up, they're not running, they're not running that section. Um, but the only ones that are offered that would look like it would be the equivalent if our students wanted to take it there that could apply their credit here and at Triton are during the middle of the day. They're not even at the beginning or the end of the day, they're right smack dab in the middle of the day. So that would not be an option for our students easily to take that course off campus if we were not to offer it here. Um, and it's not offered in Illinois Virtual High School. We did look to make sure that it, it is, 
we are a member of Illinois Virtual High School. They do offer some AP classes to see if we didn't offer them if, if, a, if a student could get it there, and this one is not offered there. So it wouldn't be an hour. We, we couldn't put a student in a study hall, allow them to get access to the class, and then get the credit. Um, and stop me at any point if you have any questions. In the math, um, there is an algebra block that's three sections that average over 19 students each, but you know some sections would probably be a little bit above when you do the sections uh, sectioning and, and staffing. Uh, excuse me, that when you run the master schedule and you do the scheduling, and some would be over. That is a period and a half. Our most vulnerable math students, we already know by their incoming Explore scores, if we don't do intensive interventions and strategic interventions with these students, they will not meet standards in the PSAE down the road. Uh, we've had great luck with these students by um, having them in that extended period and giving them that intervention right when they walk in the door and, and then um, uh, following them through usually with the same teacher in multiple years to make sure that they build on their skills and strategies. Um, it tends to be a place that when we do get transfer kids they do go into that course. Um, two sections are co-taught due to the large percentage of some of our special needs students that have limited um, math abilities. So um, that that is something that we, uh, we feel very strongly um, we're asking you to, to support for us. And what do you mean by that, just so people know? Um, so that people understand that if these students don't get that intensive intervention, that you know, you would ask, several board members had asked what the impact would be of larger class sizes or, or on our test scores and our assessments down the low line, this would be one where it would definitely impact these students. Co-teaching, um, uh, co what is the that? Co-teaching means that special, a special education teacher, according to the student's um, individualized education plan, has been written in that they need um, extra assistance. So that class would have a special education teacher that would be in there, or she would be, she or he would be moving between two classes at the same period. We put our, we stack those extended period math classes so that a teacher can move between the special education teacher can push in between um, and that that is due to their special learning needs in the area of math their, their cognitive needs on their IEPs um, any other questions on the algebra block moving on to a, the second math class excuse me oh yeah with regards to why it's a special education why didn't you put it as partially special education in the I mean, I'm trying to understand. Um, and so it, we, it, when, when um, Gail Branken came to explain to you there is a mandate for the least restrictive environment, so you always need to put the student in the regular um, education class, the general education class, rather than a special education class, if they can be served there. So you have to, that is um, a, a mandate and a requirement and <coughs> expectation for us. So depending on the students with the most severe, severe learning needs in this area would be in a standalone um, math class with just special ed students and just a special ed teacher. And when I gave you this, I passed around for you the LADZ um, policies and procedures on that. It gets very complicated but it's specified whether or not how many actual special education students can be together in a class based on how many special education classes, what percentage of their day they're in special education classes or general education classes. So those numbers can go as low as 13 students in a class depending on how much special education in their day is being uh, is taught by special education teachers versus how much is taught by general ed. So Gail has to look at all of that and through the IEP process place kids according to the least restrictive environment and look for also ratios within every class of um, how many, what percentage of regular education, what percentage of special education students are in that classroom. So she has to look at things through multiple lenses. It's very complex. But I gave you a supportive document just to give you a little bit of an uh, understanding of that if you wanted to follow up on that. Sh she's given me volumes of documents that explain all the mandates at the federal and state level that she, she needs to be concerned with when placing students. So that is why, because of the, the level of uh, needs of the child and she has to figure, is it, do I have to offer one co-taught section or two, depending on how many kids I have, how many kids overall have signed up for that class. This would also allow for some flexibility for transfers that have low math scores. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Any other questions about the algebra block? You probably should just read through the okay. next two or three, and then I'm sure there's going to be okay. Calculus um, more fun. AP Calculus BC that did not run this year has 17 students assigned, uh, who registered for that class. It is the capstone class for our most uh, accelerated math students. It's not offered at Illinois Virtual High School. They pulled it out this year. It had been offered in the past. Um, Beth wanted me to note for you that many if students are looking to go into engineering, that universities are looking for that course on a high school students' transcripts. So for, for our students to be competitive, if that's where they're looking, and we're supposed to be stressing STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math um, courses for our students, um, that is something that we would, we're asking you to consider, to, to bring that um, course back for us this year. The AP Computer Science, um, we there are 19 students that signed up for that class. That class is in italics because we did not include that in our sectioning sheets and we have chosen to not offer that class as an option. Um, there are 13 seniors signed up for it. It is a mixed grade level class. That was a hard decision for us to make, but when looking at the overall staffing ratio for the department and trying to keep it as close to 30 as possible, if we offered that class, it brought our ratio out of the range that Kevin had asked us to target, or if we were going to offer it, then we'd have to take something else or take a section away somewhere else. It made the class sizes really unmanageable for uh, different levels of learners. So it was something we struggled with, and he talked a little bit about some of those um, struggles. So that was one that we included on here so that you were not um, unaware of the fact that we chose to take that off. It's something we could offer possibly every other year or if we had enough students the next year. Um, I, asked, and, yeah, go ahead. I asked Pam to put this on there because it does align with one of our district goals of increasing in, in AP enrollment and opportunities for students to take AP courses. Um, so if the board wanted to approve tonight, as you can see, we're, we're 19 students close to the policy and uh, we could adjust accordingly to run that course. So Pam, since you didn't include it, is that one reason, for instance, the AP Calculus is 17? Because we had less than 10, I think. That's why we tried. We had eight <laughs> sign up for it this year, and we didn't run the AP Calculus. So it's a part of the reason. So if, if the students who originally signed up for AP Computer Science, now you dropped it, if they wanted to take math, which I assume nearly all of them did, They've gone into AP Calc or whatever you said. Or AP Statistics. Or AP Statistics. Probably right. more AP Stats. AP or Calc AP BC, you got to have AB. Yeah. yeah, there's. No, I yeah. know that. So, um, yes, and it affects 13 seniors. So we, we, we think of our seniors first and what other options. They do have other AP options that they could take, and there are room in those. So courses. the problem is, like what people talked about earlier, is if we drop AP Computer Science kids who were planning to take it for the last first three years they were here thinking in my senior year I'll take AP computer science and now it's just not available to it's them available. so that's correct they're, if they really want to learn computers they can't I presume and yeah. but instead they would have had to take stats or calculus well if they took a B calculus which they may not have right yeah the, the, the is it comparable for the AP computer science at Triton um, you know that that uh, yes, I mean, I would assume that they're, they're, it's called something differently. It's, it's, it's programming code. They have different phrases for it, so we couldn't see an exact, when you look at our code, course description and you look at theirs, they break theirs apart slightly differently. So it is not a, a particular wash. It's not like ours would transfer to theirs, but there are classes at Triton that you can take. Um, I don't know where they fall during the day, but um, th there are programs. A programming classes there in computer science. I, I would recommend to the board that we consider running it for another year considering we're one student under the 20 threshold and what could always happen is once we run the master schedule if we see there's a lot of conflicts if it's before the March deadline we can add that <coughs> section back to the reductions that we're going to approve in March if it's after the March deadline we could still collapse that and use that section to offset some of those transfers or a section that has higher class sizes. So there's all there's ways that we can kind of address that, you know, accordingly. But what we wanted to do is the reason we're bringing these to you now on February 14th, even though we don't have to make a decision on the staffing till March, is I wanted Pam and, and her staff to try to run at least one or two drafts of the master schedule. So if there's a lot of conflicts with some of these courses, which would either, you know, 
force kids to move into other sections where there's available seats and or uh, increase the staff reduction count, we can try to have a better handle on that before the March deadline. And, and all these classes are, the majority of them are singletons, and we need to know when you begin, there's only one of them. One slot in the day you're going to put that that a student can get, and when you begin building your master schedule, you build with your singletons first. So I have to know if these are going or not. I'm kind of in a holding pattern until I have that answer, which is why we're asking you. Well, you, question for you. You anticipate, mm -hmm. you proposed originally not for us to vote on this and that you were going to drop it taking the permutation of the 19 students and you say we're going to put them into AP stats, what does that put the AP stats class at? Um, I, I can look at the numbers. I have them down here. That's, what, that's why I think at this yeah. point I would say the board approve yeah. it. And if it doesn't work out, we can use that section to either balance other numbers or if more kids go to AP stats and we got to open a second section of AP stats, it well, gives us fl some flexibility. You know, I think one thing we should have started with is Based in, I'm going to ask you some questions on TV because I think people need to understand what you're saying. But based on what you're recommending, even if you add this one, you have one, two, five, six, seven sections of 20 or less. What was the number this year, Pam? Oh, I didn't bring that with me. But it was um, like it, it, 25 it, or 30, wasn't it? Yeah, there were quite a few. But so, I mean, some of those put a lot of special effort. needs classes. No, I, I understand that. But you also put a lot of effort into right, yeah. to get it from 7 oh. to what you did. You made a substantial improvement right. from what we yeah. talked about this year. So that's something that's worth noting. Yeah. Wait a second. I think it's 40, isn't it? It, it was. Is it 40? It, there were 20, yeah. I think, on the first page and 20-something. I think yeah. it, Okay, so yeah. there's 40 classes that were under 20. Let's get that on the record. I, I didn't know the exact. No, no, it's good. No, I'm <laughs> just you, saying. You make, you're making a great You put a lot of effort into know this. pushing yeah. that and yeah. getting it down. Yeah. So to look at, say, well, now we're going to add a couple with 16 or 17, yeah. it's a significant yeah. improvement from what was done this yeah. year. Yeah. And if you don't mind, because you asked if there were questions from you sure. halfway through. Sure, go, go right ahead. On, the, done, go ahead. on the advanced auto, we yeah. don't offer a lot of vocational classes, right? No, no we so don't. So kids that are in the vocational area, and does that run together to one and two? Is it one section where he teaches? He or does combine the advanced level okay. one and two to for students. And, and, and um, it, it's, it's very interesting that we have Last year I met with the Fredrickson Scholarship Committee and they have all this money for our students, for our seniors, for vocational scholarships and we don't have that many students trying to get the money. So we have, you know, ways to su support these students and, and pay for their education at, at Triton oh. if they apply for the scholarship. And so that, the people that are trustees of that scholarship are actually coming into our auto classes, our the Woods class, the Exploring Technology, to talk to these students about the fact that, that these opportunities are available for them. So, w you know, we would hope that we could support some um, th these courses as well. Th this is uh, Im important to these kids. Um, as one of the parents said, you know, RB needs to be there for all the students, you know, regardless of, of what their needs are. So, um, thank you for bringing that up. It's a very limited vocational program we have here. And the last thing, and again, be cognizant of our students are in the program, the mm -hmm. question we're going to ask, but, and obviously there are the students who take our board meetings and other activity, but mm -hmm. you got to, I mean, you said they're not in our FTE chart, people, I mean, everybody's somewhere in an FTE mm -hmm. chart, so, I mean, it's not like we don't count people, like the right. computers that were right. in the boxes now downstairs, so I think yes. you need to explain it a little better, and, okay. and also explain the... In the TV, the first one, there's 13 mm -hmm. students, seven days, six night, and the advanced, there's 30 students, so it would be an average of 15. I, right. I, you know, could you explain that so sure. we understand it? Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about how, how that individual is yeah, it's just structured with, a little with, bit different than I can explain the courses? With that course, um, FTEs are accounted for, but that's a provisional certificate that's not part of the certified, certified staff. teaching staff. Right. right. So, in, in long, in, you know, we have uh, an audiovisual director, and then we have an assistant audiovisual director. Um, majority of the time has been on uh, teaching, you know, five or six TV classes. What we wanted to do is condense that so that 
you know, half of his day could be working with the TV classes and the other half of his day could be working with the audiovisual department so that if we have to make any other reductions. Okay. So it's 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 an FT it's it's a, a full time employee but it's not accounted with that certified staff. It's just something that's unique to RB. Oh well, that's fine. I just yeah. And there are, there are many levels of this class that after the students take the introduction to TV, which is a year-long class and an entry-level class, they can continue in the advanced level sure. one through six. And sometimes they take, you know, the next year one and two together. Sometimes they can only fit one advanced TV one in and they have to wait the next year and take two. So the, the teacher of this class combines the students as they, and it's been very flexible in, in trying to take the students when they can fit it in their day. But we are, we're going to probably condense them, we're asking to condense them down um, so that we have basically three sections of it right now. I believe we're running six. So we would alter the way we're offering it to students, but still offer them any level that they need. Any other questions for Pam? Uh, okay. Okay. So we have a few just, more. Just two more. Science two in more the world language. Complete. Science, AP, science, uh, AP physics ran this year with 32. They have, there is a, usually a limit in our labs of 26 students um, in order to run the class. 32 this year was very difficult to function with the labs the students do. So um, we ended up with 38 students signing up. So we're asking you to give us permission to run those two sections at 19 per section. Um, the challenge we have is, is if we wanted to limit it to 32 and then see who could get it, gets it, and the ones who can't would have to take another, all our other AP options for the science students in the science department are already over the 26 lab limit. So it'd be um, Mr. Denny did, you know, really did the job he was asked to do, and he ran those limits up, so there's nowhere for those students to go. So if you wanted another science class AP, and you would have a have a challenge. This there. is like one of those unique uh, situations. Like normally, I don't know if this is something we would next in, in the future need to bring to the board because there's more than 20 students signed up for the class. It just warrants the second section to, to create s appropriate staffing levels. Yeah. You know, so this is something as we go forward. Um, but we wanted to make sure anything that was under 20 in this first year of this new policy, the board got to see. Okay. And the last one is the World Language Department. Um, <coughs> we have the combination of uh, Honors German 3, uh, one class with three levels, which is not optimal, <coughs> but which is sometimes happens in a smaller s school in order to be able to, to um, get the students at all the, the different levels to get their final year or their upper years. So it's Honors German 3, AP German Language, and Honors German 5. So it comes to a total of 16 <coughs> students. AP and Level 5 are the capstone um, courses where it's going to be the fourth year of, of that language that's required for a selective or highly selective college. You're expected to go through your four years of your, of your program. Um, without these two courses, so Honors German 3 is a little bit different, but for the, the um, other two, there would be eight students that wouldn't have their fourth year of their language, and, and German is not offered at the Illinois Virtual School. So, and it's not, I, I checked, it's not offered at Triton, so I made an, an, an error by listing that earlier. So these, these students, um, we've made a commitment to their language, and we're, we're asking you to, to let us um, finish out their program. So if the, there was concern about, about the German program, we wouldn't want it, the seniors um, to, to take the brunt of that. So. We are earnestly asking for that. The rest is just all those special classes that we're um, letting you know about. So are you proposing to combine these or are these individual classes? Those are all combined in one, combined class. one class. Yeah. For the 16, yeah. okay. Right. Which is a little more difficult for the students and the it's teachers. It's very difficult for the students and the teachers to, to do that. But that is typical that you, you combine, I'm sure that. Yeah, I had to do that as principal also. Yeah. The interest level in some of the languages is diminishing. Um, it, 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 it's definitely a challenge, but it's something that's happened here before. I mean, that's that's been typical here as well. I mean, this year we have some AC, AP Spanish um, literature students. I think it is in a regular AP, AP, in a regular Spanish class as well. It was the only way they could get the course, so we sometimes do that. All right. Any other questions for Pam? I have a question sure. on the world languages. So, the German, the advanced German, wasn't offered at 
Are there any advanced language courses offered at Triton? Yes, I mean I didn't spend a, a great deal of time on their their book because I you know since what I looked at for German it wasn't there, but yeah I I, I don't I'm not sure their whole program so. The, the, they, the, they don't offer basic French in the summer. Yeah, they they have. Uh, so your child you might not offer year three and four. Yeah. yeah. They don't even offer basic in the summer. I. I they don't. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, for Pam. Pam the, so the sure. the rest of your explanation here there's still courses under 20 but in essence they almost have to be under 20 Correct. because of all the special ed rules that you tried to explain right, to exactly. us and gave it. so we exactly. do have a few other sections but to meet the state laws and rules with special needs students you can't run a bigger anywhere right exactly okay and or they have to run or they have we to can't, run. You gotta have them, yeah, you and you also are limited that. in how many students you yeah. can have. Yeah, you're going to be educating those students, okay. and you'd have to if you didn't put them in a co-taught section, you have to move them out to just a special education section, and the FT just transfers over to. You, you can't get away with not not staffing these classes. But I did give you the, all the information, so you were aware of it. <clears throat> Any other questions? So we're going to have a resolution then to discuss. This is the resolution that came with the packet that was attached. I think he's asking, is someone going to read that first? Oh, yeah. Well, we no. well discussion. my question is, Kevin, is this computer science part of this now? Yeah, I, I would, my recommendation to the board is anything that was presented to you tonight that you strongly consider approving, including AP computer science, I can adjust that staffing level and make a final determination mm -hmm. on that in March when teacher reductions have to be finalized. So we have one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Did you include computer science? Yes. Well, we're not. We don't have to vote on the courses for the special population. Yeah, no. We do. Yes, we do. This is for information purposes. That's for information purposes because, purposes because these are required yeah, courses right. that we would have to. So I just. My, my we talked about that before we adopted the policy, and we specifically did not exclude special needs courses from the policies so that they all would be brought before us. We do have to approve them. The policy says any course under 20. So we do have to approve them. And we had that discussion before right. we got I, to the I think, I, I think we're stuck on a technicality because as you know, I think we're bringing them before to the board so that we're informing the board of what special pot. Um, so if the board feels they need to support them, if the board didn't and we didn't run them, We'd be in a compliance deep break. So I mean, no, I, 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 I get what I'm you're simplifying right. it. Yes, the Just law says we have to do it, but yes, our policy says we have to approve them. So there's a lot of things we approve that we have to approve anyway. Okay, right? so if, this is one of them. If you will make a motion tonight and vote for this, you will have courses for special population and also AP computer science. So if you vote yes on this, do I have a motion? I so think the curriculum should come so, no so the motion so the yeah. motion is the fifteen items. Correct. That's right. Because because it says C list, so I just want to make sure we get a number out. Maybe there. we yeah. should list the items in the motion because if anybody's reading the minutes, I think to list. I don't think we need to because they're listed in the attachment, we which would be on. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've done that in the past. It's helpful just to list the name of the. Okay. All right, so I think that somebody from the curriculum should make a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll read the resolution. Okay. Uh, if I have to fix this, tell me. Resolved that the Board of Education, Township High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves in accordance with the district policy 6, colon 31, the list of courses for the 2012 13 school year, projecting enrollment below 20 students based on the current student enrollment data as presented in February. 14th, 2012, board agenda packet consisting of 15 courses. Okay, three, four, seven, nine. Can yeah. we just say consisting of or as listed as follows and just put the name? Why don't we just say as amended, like we do with everything else? That's cool, as amended. Is that all right with you, John? Okay with sure. You, John? Sure. All right, do I have a second? Second. Second by who? Tim Walsh. Tim Walsh. Any other discussion? Oh. Go ahead. You want to go first? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, 
Dr. Skink has <coughs> decided to recommend that we, we include computer science, uh, keep computer science. This sort of goes to what I was talking about before, about how, how we're going to focus the school in the future and what, what we need to concentrate on. Um, we're looking at this, and Laura made this point at our meeting, computer science really isn't math. I mean, it's related to math, but we shouldn't, like, look at computer science. We have to cut computer science because somehow it's related, you know, cutting back on the other math uh, offerings. I mean, computer science is essential in this society. And people would look at RB and look at us and say, you're cutting your computer science. I mean, it would look really, really bad, and it's really short-sighted. Um, second of all, I think there's a problem that there's only 19 kids signed up for this. I'm not sure if it's our guidance counselors or what the focus is, but I think everyone who's going to college you know, especially high-end colleges should be taking this class. I know we have lots of intelligent people, or lots of intelligent students, people with high expectations. I mean, this is a way to get a head start on college. You go to college, you take beginning computer science, you know, there's 500 kids in the class. Taking this course at RB is a great way to, you know, get a head start on a topic that's relatively difficult. And I think because it's difficult, not enough kids are signing up. I think that our guidance department has to look at this more carefully and market this class to all students. Um, finally, we have to look at the concept of the fact that we have some required courses here, um, fine arts survey, for instance. The fact that a student has to take a fine arts survey, even though they've taken you know, four years of music, <coughs> The fact that they have to take something like that prevents them from taking something like computer science. This is certainly more valuable. I'm not here to make the decision about how we should necessarily should focus things, but I think the community has to look at this as we're trying to transform our school, how we're going to focus you know, our education for our kids on what's most valuable. Thank you, Kevin, Dr. Skinkis, for including this in your recommendation. Lori, anything? Yeah, I, uh, my comment was I still feel uncomfortable with saying just 15 courses. I just think we maybe should say AA 140 pre med and list the exact classes because we've amended it. Somebody had an earlier. It's just easier when they read the minutes exactly what courses were approved. How about we list them as part of the discussion in the minutes? Okay. So it doesn't have to be part of the motion. We can so very we can direct the board the secretary minutes. to list the 15 courses in the minutes as the discussion. Okay, so we'll do that, Marianne, you'll do that for us? Thank, Thank you very much. All right. a, and, I think, and I think it's important that we also included the uh, applied arts classes because we have to recognize that not every student will be going on a college course and we need to take care of all the students. So um, I, I fully approve and agree with that recommendation that we not leave those kids behind. The last page of the document you received, and Marianne, if you wanted to put that on the document uh, camera for the, those in attendance. Um, this is just a summary sheet from Pam right now. Um, the, the section we should focus on is the section to the right. Um, Marianne, if you want to focus with that under the... the uh, the the camera is more the right side. The, the side well, that's in red. She she she, she does so she doesn't want to cover up the department name though. That's all the way okay. on the left. So the more or less, this shows the change in FTE in each department. And then it will bring it, the next column shows the FTEs that each department will have in each department, and then it gives you an idea of where they were on their targets. So like when we talked about math. Um, you know, we didn't stick, they were within their plus or minus two variance. They're at 28.6. So adding that AP science might bring that closer to 28 than 30. So there will be some classes that will have some flexibility for movement and others that are staffed very tight. But the goal was through this first round is to get everybody as close as possible to their targets um, for staffing. And we put the fine arts classes on the bottom. 
um, so that you can see how we came up with their department averages. So this gives you an idea of where the 10.5 are coming from in regards to reductions and where their average class size as a department is. And as we continue to work on the master schedule and then by the March this meeting in March when we have to finalize uh, FTE reduction, <coughs> we'll have this document finalized. Kevin, does this change if we make a significant change to the uh, chair position? Do we get more um, you would get, FTEs? What would happen is if we did not fund department chair stipends next year and went with a different administrative model, 2.8 FTEs go back into the classroom. So 2.8 FTEs of your lowest seniority teachers would then be also reduced in force and the, the department chairs would then go from having release periods to teaching five classes. Okay, let me ask two other questions. So the original goal in music and special ed was 40 to one. So you're a little higher on, excuse me, I, I meant to say um, physical ed. I think I said the wrong thing. But you're two part, but on the non-lab it says 40 to one. Why is there a different number on 31 under? And there's wellness because you have health classes and you have like the uh, the health training classes. So they're they are limited, right? They're mm -hmm. classroom courses. But on the fine arts, because uh, you said music, we we didn't get quite that high, but we're certainly up from where we were last year. Right. Kind of tied with some people say make sure that you make that available for people. Right. right. And some so of that where that gets cloudy is the whole. Um, yeah, it's it's. <coughs> That's fair enough. It's close. It needs, you know, if we started to cut some more, that, then we would start cutting opportunities. So okay. we can look at that again no. as we get closer to the final number. That's pretty good. All right, so we got a motion and we have a second. Anybody else? And we're, we're approving these now. And then I know I've asked this question before and I can't remember what the answer is. But when we do the schedule, there's a class that can be potentially dropping some students yes. that we've approved. Yes, sir. And, and how are we dealing with that, or what is our philosophy with that? Well, what the way you would want to do that when you're dealing with a budget reduction is, you know, we would want to look at how many students are conflicting out. So that's why we moved up. I moved up the timeline with the building so mm -hmm. that they can run a master schedule once or twice before the March board meeting. So if we saw a significant drop, if, if we saw a significant amount of conflicts with one particular class, we would either do one or two things, choose to collapse that class and ask those kids to sign up for somewhere else where there's room, or, and then either reduce our FTEs by that section, one more section, and or use that section to offset something that maybe drove the class sizes up. So if all those, like Gary had brought up earlier, if those students drop, um, from AP, if we didn't run AP computer science and 10 of those students chose to go into stats, now we might need a second section of stats. Mm -hmm. So by approving these tonight, it gives us an opportunity to run the conflicts. And yes, there very well might be a few students after the fact that say, hey, you know what, I don't want to take AP physics anymore. I'd rather be in a study hall my senior year. You know, that's something we recommend, but that could drop it to 16 instead of 19. So we're trying to, to yeah. limit those which is what dr. King brought up before we've cut that number significantly the class is under 20. I appreciate your first two words we're trying all right Pam, anything else yeah one other thing do you have a feel for how much of the ability to make this happen was really working on putting slotting classes right in your master schedule where we said we had a problem last year versus how much of where kids had to take second choice courses? I mean. I think it was a combination of um, redu reducing the amount of, of options for kids and newer people building the master schedule. And um, when you reduce options, there's obviously less flexibility. Like to answer uh, Mr. Gritchen's question, there are three sections of the AP stats um, running at, I think that was the one you asked me about, right? Running yeah. at 29 mm -hmm. a, a piece. So there's some room to, to absorb some other students. You know, those are getting big, but, but that's still possible to do. So 
that's a challenge in a, in a small school when you have a very rich curriculum with lots of opportunities but not many sections of things. It's, it's tight for everybody to get what they want. So I think it was a combination of reducing where we used to have multiple sections of things and going down to one on so many classes and then a new um, student management system and a new person doing the task and a lot of things all together. Then we had, we were building the, the schedule and then we didn't pass the referendum then we had to start changing things. So we were changing in midstream mm -hmm. because again, how late the referendum happens in the master schedule building process, we had to stop and kind of shift things and it was difficult. The, the whole schedule wasn't scrapped and we didn't start from square one. So that also added another challenge to the building. Um, so I appreciate having an answer on these so we can begin building it um, now and come back to you with how it's going. You can have a progress report so you won't be surprised. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Marianne, will you please go to the vote? Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Welch? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Yes. Dr. Yes. Mr. Moon. Aye. Mr. Cindy. Yes. All right. Our uh, next uh, item on is a uh, press packet 78, press from the IASA, uh, ISAB. Kevin, you want to talk about that? I just wanted to include this in your board packet so you can have a first reading because there's some that require uh, that we should be um, adopting as soon as possible, which would mean I would be bringing them after meeting with the policy council. To you in March, so I just wanted to. When we get these packets in, I want to get them in all the board members' hands so you have something to you can get caught up on it over the next couple of weeks. If we can, if we have time next week, I will try to get the policy council in before the committee of the whole. Um, but definitely, we'll be bringing some action items from this packet to the March meeting for approval. Are we going to do this in the February tower? No. If we have if we have time, if we have time, if we have a policy. Advisory council meeting, and we'll talk about okay. the stuff that's going on. If not, you'll definitely have the action before the March meeting. Okay, we're going to go into a closed session to discuss. Yeah. Can I ask of the, uh, the president and the superintendent who do the agenda? Uh, I appreciate the, the, the paper. If we're not going to include this in the next package, if we could just reference on the agenda where all this paper is. So that, you know, like in earlier in the facilities, we said you got this before. If we can maybe reference the date. So don't copy this anymore. So one time. Yeah, yeah. Right. One, one <laughs> time. <laughs> Come on. We, you you know. Know. Well, we're hoping, too, Mr. Welch, in July. You yes. Can I have access so. to this on your iPad okay. or laptop or wherever. Okay. All right. So we're going to go into closed session right now. Uh, we're going to discuss some personnel issues, collective bar bargaining negotiation. Yeah and litigation and then right after that where it says visitor statement so then we're going to have one more opportunity for you to talk before we go to closed session which we're going to be doing in the conference room in our district conference room here so